Are you planning on creating a comic book in 2021? Well, you're gonna need some tools. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We also create comics. I create a comic called Young and the Dead. It is a kids versus zombie story. Think Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. So if you're into you know, those old action, kid-centric movies from the 80s where kids are the heroes and they fight un unsurmountable odds and all this, uh, this time they're fighting zombies. And so if you like, like Goonies, Monster Squad, Explorers, or more recently, Stranger Things, uh, you'll probably like that. So that's the book that I'm gonna be starting back on, hopefully in 2021. That's the goal anyway. And I know you guys probably have your own goals as far as comics that you wanna create. And if it's your first time creating a comic, or if it's been a while, or maybe you just want to try something new, you might be thinking of, well, what kind of tools do I need to make a comic, or what kind of tools should I get? So that's what I'm going to talk about today are the tools that I use. And before I go any further, I just want to make it clear that you could use all the tools that I'm using. It's not necessarily going to mean you draw the way I draw. Just like I, if I pick my favorite artist and I ask them what tools they use, if I got all those tools, I'm not going to be able to draw like them. The other thing I want to say is you don't necessarily need all these fancy tools or the, you know, some people, some people you buy real expensive tools and software and all this stuff. You don't always really need that. Really, all you need if you want to start a comic, I mean, if it's money is an option or, if the tools aren't available where you're at or whatever the case is, really all you need to create a comic are, you know, these loose sheets of paper and a pencil. That's basically the bare minimum. Or if you work digitally, if you have some sort of computer software already that's maybe available free or you already have it, you can use that too. I'm going to be mostly talking about uh, traditional tools, but, you know, I use traditional and digital tools all the time, so I kind of switch back and forth. But... Today I'm gonna to talk mostly about, I might throw a digital thing in there, <laughs> one digital tool in there, but really I don't want you to overcomplicate things. You know, just start, especially if you're first starting off, all you really need is pencil, paper, and just get to it. Don't worry about getting all the right tools. That can come later as you get further along in your art journey. But if you wanna know what tools I use, I'm gonna kinda of go through them. Um, now some of these tools are tools that I've bought, I purchased, that I've used, and other tools are, are products that I've personally created and put out there for you guys to help you create better comics. So the first set of tools that I'm gonna talk about is my book series. It is called Make Your Own Comics. It is available on Amazon.com. So if you got Amazon Prime, it's free shipping. I will put a link in the description for this, the, all these books that I'm showing you, as well as the other tools that I'm gonna get into. It will be all in the description of this video. Um, some of the, most of them are available on Amazon, uh, some on my website, but this one here, these, this series is only available on Amazon, but if you got Prime shipping, it's free shipping, they're relatively inexpensive, and I'll kind of show you what they are, but this one is just blank comic book pages, so you can see there's just a variety of different panels and everything. Now, there are other blank comic book books out there. Um, I stand by this one, and I think really this is the best you're going to find on Amazon. I've looked at some of the other books, and I really don't think, they don't look like they're created by people who have created comic books and like so I mean I've got a little experience doing that so I think my books a little better and they're not any more expensive or anything than some of the other books out there and I've got you know I've got some extras and everything some little tips as well as the different comic book layouts that you can get so these are really great books I'm really proud of them I stand by them I, I put my name on them and everything so this is just blank comic book pages but you know there's all kinds I've got some that have you know they've got some word balloons in there already that you can kind of fill in that you know can help you with your story it just depends how you want to work maybe you want to do everything yourself or maybe you want to create your own panels and then you don't need these books at all but these are kind of good workbooks just to kind of have around I've got other ones here that have sound effects already in so that can kind of inspire you with your stories if you want to go that route I have some that are just blank and then here have where you can lay out your comic book right here and it's just it's divided up just like a regular comic book template would be I've got some these are really great these are popular um, this is just for creating thumbnails so it's just got a bunch of thumbnails and thumbnails are before you get into actually drawing your comic book you want to kind of lay everything out in little tiny 
you know, little tiny panels or little tiny pages. Um, and it gives you a good overview of the whole story that you're working on. And it takes a lot less time. And these are just for real rough sketches. So I've got the thumbnail books. And then I've got another, this is part of the same series, but a little different title. This is Make Your Own Heroes. So if you're into creating heroes and everything, this one is male and female heroes. I've got a separate one for just male, a separate one for just female. This one's got both. And as you can see, it's just got little turnarounds. So you can draw your character from every angle. It's got these little guides and you just fill in, you kind of create your own costumes and everything, both male and female on this one. And this one's super fun. This is make your own heroes data files. So if you're like me and you're old school and you remember the old Marvel Universe handbooks where it told you all about the characters, all the different powers and everything, this is kind of for, this is like for that. So you can, you can draw your characters here and then, and this has got male and female, and you can write, it's got all kinds of stuff. You can write their, you know, secret identity, their team affiliation, their age, their height, their weight, and all their little stats, their strengths, their agility, speed, all that kind of stuff. You can write your, their origin stories, all that stuff in here. So you can get one of these notebooks and just fill in and create your superhero team. Now, maybe, you know, maybe you love making comics, but you like a, sort of a different style of making comics. Maybe you're more into a Japanese manga. I have a series for that too. It's make your own manga. It's kind of the same principle, but they're, they're formatted a little differently. More of a manga pages. They're smaller, but with more pages. Mangas are typically thicker than American comics. So it's a little thicker but and a little smaller, but here you go, you different, you know, all kinds of panel layouts. This one I really like because this is the Japanese one with the sound effects. And on one side, it's got the Japanese sound effects. And on the other side, on the opposite page, it has the English. So it's got both. So that's kind of fun. And then the same thing, I've got the ones with the word balloons. I've got the thumbnails for manga and I've got the page layouts for manga. So all of those are available. There's a link in the description for those. Again, these are books that I've created myself to help you guys out, but there are other things that I purchased that I use to create comics. So let me get into some of these tools. Now, of course, you're gonna need something to draw on if you're creating comics. This is one of two products that I recommend. This is the Strathmore Bristol Comic Book Boards. And I will leave a link to where you can find these, but these are, you know, these are comic book templates. I mean, they've got, it's kind of ruled out and everything and it's 11 by 17. So about twice the size that you, that you, that of a, of a standard American comic book. So, you know, you draw, usually when you're drawing comics, you draw larger. If you don't have to, you can draw, you can draw, I mean, there's really no rules to creating comics, but typically people draw it about this size for American comics and then it reduces it. That way you can get a little more detail and and yeah, I don't know, I, I typically draw, draw about at this size, and this is pretty standard for a lot of comic book artists. So there's Strathmore, also Canson makes, uh, makes a line of these that's really good too. Either one of those two brands are great for comic book pages. So you've got your paper, you're gonna need something to draw with. Uh, this is what I use. Now, again, different artists like different things. Sometimes when I'm doing sketches, I will use just Prismacolor Colorace pencils and everything. But if I'm actually drawing like on a page, doing traditional art, Work, I like to use what is known as a lead holder. Uh, this is going back way back in the days. My first job was doing architectural renderings and this is sort of what draftsmen use. And so I started using these for comics and to my surprise I found out that a lot of other comic book artists also use these. So uh, it kind of looks like a mechanical pencil but it's a little different. It, it, it comes with these leads that are a little thicker and you do need a special pencil sharpener. For them, and I'm, again, I'm going to leave links to all of these so you can find all this stuff. You can buy these. I'm using non-photo blue pencils. Again, you can use the graphite color, the gray pencils if you want. You can use whatever, <laughs> but I use the blue because traditionally they didn't photograph. So, and also nowadays, if you're scanning something in, you can just reduce the, or you could just zap out the blue color. So you can go back and you don't have to erase all of these lines. But it's kind of a three-part system. You need the pencil leads. You need the pencil holder and you need the sharpener. And it's just, it's kind of a weird sharpener. You, you kind of put that in there and you go around and there's a little grinder in here and it just gets a really sharp point. And they're a little thicker than your typical mechanical pencil so they don't break as much. I really like using these. So this is, this is my personal recommendation 
for what kind of pencil to use. Now, after you pencil your comic, you're gonna need to ink it. So uh, I recommend the Winsor Newton Series 7. Sometimes these can get a little pricey. A more economical brush could be like a Cotman watercolor brushes. You can get those at Michaels. I don't know if I have a link for those, but um, you, can, you can look for them. But Winsor Newton Series 7, these are really great brushes. Just take good care of them because sometimes they can be a little pricey. I found them, sometimes I find them a little less expensive online. Um, but anyway, I use these all the time. Great brushes. And as far as inks, I recommend one of these two inks by Deleter. There is a Deleter number four and a Deleter number five. These are Japanese inks. And for some reason, I find that the Japanese inks work way better than like the Higgins Black Magic or some of the other inks that I got. Sometimes it takes a little longer to get these because sometimes they have to ship them from Japan and everything. And they can be a little more pricier, um, but a little goes a long way for, for the most part. The difference is between the four and the five. I believe the four is a matte finish and the five is a little glossier. I used to use five, but once I discovered the four, I like that matte finish a little better, but either one are great inks and they just go on really smooth. And so this is the ink that I recommend. Again, links in the description. Now, if you wanna correct mistakes or if you wanna add special effects like stars and things like that, you're gonna need a good white, white ink. Uh, the one that I got in the link is this uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Proof Bleed White. And, uh, but Deleter also makes a white ink. This is number two. I don't know the difference really between the number one and number two. It could be, it could be that glossy matte thing. I don't know, but either one of these uh, should work pretty well. Um, but yeah, the Dr. P.H. Martin's Proof White or the Deleter White number two. Now, I don't always use a brush. Sometimes I will use a pen for certain things, especially when I'm laying out you know, panels and things like that. So of course, uh, I always go with Microns. They come in different sizes. This uh, Pigma Micron pens, you can buy packs that have different you know different thicknesses and everything uh, the one I use the most is a, a, a number eight uh, but if you want some real fine things you can get all the way into this is a this is a, a double ot five which is super detailed and everything it just kind of depends it's 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 up to you uh, the one I use most though is the eight and I will leave links to these in the description as well the other pins I use uh, just like I have the white ink uh, that I brush on I also use white gel pens uh, this this is a Sino gel pen. I've got a link to that in the description. And another brand that I use is just a Jelly Roll pen. Now, when you're laying out your comic, you're gonna need some rulers. If you watch my channel, you've probably heard me talk about this before. I love this tool. Uh, and it, it's it's just, it's such a simple tool and it's kind of portable. You can take it wherever you go rather than having like a big T-square and a, a, you know all these big rulers and everything. But it is called a mapping ruler or a parallel glider. And it's just got these little wheels on it and it just glides down the page and it won't budge or anything you got to get a good one though they have other ones that have little plastic things and they don't they don't work quite as good so just make sure the thing you want to make sure is that it's got metal rollers um, and then it's got like a little rubber washer at the end, but just make sure that it's got that metal to it. And you just put it on your page and you can you know, glide up and down either horizontally or vertically or however you want and you just rule out your lines with that and everything. And if you need a longer line, you can put your rest, your longer uh, ruler on top of it and move it up and down. Um, but this is just such a great tool and it's just so accurate. Um, and I use it all the time and a lot of my artist friends recommend these too as well. Of course, all the lines that you're gonna draw aren't gonna be straight lines, so you need some way to draw some curved lines. Uh, for those, you're gonna need some French curves. They are just these little funky little shape things that uh, you can kind of curve any way you want to kind of find what particular curvature you want. <laughs> Uh, but and they come in all shapes and sizes I will leave a link to a pack that has a number of these in it or if you you know and you may not find the shape you're looking for that you can make a lot of different shapes with that but you may not find the one you're looking for so you can get something like this which is a bendable ruler um, and you can just kind of find whatever shape you want and bend it like that so I'll leave a link to a bendable ruler as well and as far as these physical tools go the last one I want to mention are just circle templates you draw in drawing comics you draw a lot of circles now if you have a huge circle sometimes you'll need a compass for that 
But for some smaller circles like this, uh, a lot of times I'll just, uh, I'll get these circle templates. You can also get them in like ellipse shapes. So you can, and you can use some of those for like word balloons. And uh, these are more full circle, but you can get a, them in, you know, different, different size ellipses and all that kind of stuff. But I will leave a link to these also in the description of this video. So I have one more product that I want to mention, one more tool. And this is another one that I have created for you guys. So just full disclosure but it is the comic maker toolkit and it is just uh it's a digital product this time so if you like to work digital if you know maybe or maybe you know you can work both but if you're if you're solely digital or if you like to do both and if you want some digital tools the comic maker toolkit it's great it comes with digital brushes it comes with page templates uh sound effects all that kind of stuff some of the stuff that i showed you uh in the in the workbooks uh, it's digital versions of that that you can use you can, and you can use it in Photoshop you can use it in Clip Studio Paint uh, and it's got you know it's got you can use it in Adobe Illustrator and it's got fonts it's got it's just got tons of stuff like that and if you want to sample what you can do with that I, ha I have the the comic maker starter kit which is available for free you can try that out use some of the tools and then if you want more tools if you want the full thing then uh, you, then you can get the comic maker toolkit but either the if you want to start off with the starter kit or get the full thing um, and they're different products they don't all have the same thing so but yeah the comic maker toolkit is another product that I've created I put a lot of time and effort into it and I've sold quite a few so if that's any indication of how well this thing works I haven't really had any complaints on it uh, but it's just tons of really cool digital tools and it's got like I said Photoshop Illustrator uh, and if you use a program other than that other than those two or Clip Studio Paint it has PNG versions of all of the different files so and those are pretty much universal that you can open up whatever drawing program you use they're pretty versatile so that's the other one that I want to mention is the comic maker toolkit so those are some digital and physical traditional uh, tools that I use that I recommend that I've created and hopefully that's gonna help you out if you guys have any questions about making comics or whatever I have a series called making comics 101 I'm doing live versions of that answering questions but if you have questions about making comics let me know in the comment section I'll try to answer those uh, let me know what kind of tools you use if you use tools that I haven't mentioned that you would recommend put those in the comment section for other people to check out uh, but those are the tools that I've used a lot of them I've used for quite a long time and they haven't scared me wrong yet so they're tried and true um, check them out if you want or like I said you can go with just the old standby of paper and pencil um, anyway I'll see you guys later that is all Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. If you like making comics, then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.